Hi, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about teens and their emotional status regarding the COVID-19 issue um, and some strategies that parents or caregivers um, could use to help. And today, you're going to see us in a little different format. We're doing a Zoom recording. So I'm joined today by Amy Stapleton, who's the bereavement manager for the Chesapeake Life Center. So thanks, Amy, for taking time to talk with me today. Sure, Jamie. I'm glad to be here. So one of the first things I think that we could really explore is talking about the loss that teens are experiencing. So I know you're, you've expressed that you've heard a lot about that. Can you share a little bit about what, what's been going on? Yeah, so um, one of the things that I'm noticing as I'm talking to teens during this time is really the impact of, of the loss of events of their lives, kind of these rites of passage that they were so looking forward to, whether that's spring break or prom, graduation, um, final, you know, seasons of a particular sport. Um, I'm also talking to a lot of students who are unsure about taking their final AP exams. And so in all these events, um, people are, have planned and, and prepared and really look forward to these times and teens are experiencing the loss of not having the opportunity to complete um, what they've worked so hard for and really see um, as part of their their rite of passage right. of graduating and, and completing all these other different events that mean so much to them. Yeah, I'm sure that's gotta be, that's significant because it's, it's a big deal and it's something that we talk about and look forward to and generally and most other times have had the opportunity to celebrate or to experience. And those are, that, that sounds like it would be a significant um, loss or a big feeling to not be able to do that. Yeah. My sense too is that while we have awesome technology like you and I are using today, we're missing that in person interaction, which my thought for a teen would be, that's got to be huge. Indeed, I think it is huge because at that particular phase of life, your peer group is everything. In many ways, they are your family. These are the people that you're constantly in contact with at school, via text, via social media. So um, to be kind of isolated is, is a real challenge and kind of helping teens realize there's lots of ways to stay connected. Um, but also recognizing the fact that this is a real loss and, and trying to understand their reality, which for all of us, everything has changed. Um, but especially for teens, they, they rely on that one-on-one -on -one interaction and they're just not getting it these days. So, so moving sort of towards the strategies or helpful hints that would be good for parents or caregivers to utilize, um, it sounds like one of the first things might be to just acknowledge that these are actual losses. Yeah, I think to not minimize, to not dismiss, but to really understand and recognize what a stressful time this is in the life of, of teens. Um, it's way too easy to, to consider our own grief and loss, and frustration and stress in these times and and want to kind of have that adult conversation with our teens, which I think can also be helpful about some of our own stress and modeling for teens how to move through it. But I think first we have to start with just hearing them out, listening to what they have to say, offering empathy, um, acknowledging that they have the right to feel sad and frustrated and angry and, and just using language like, I'm really sorry all of this has happened. I get it's a lot of loss to absorb in a really um, short amount of time. So starting with that acknowledgement and understanding is, is essential. That, I really like the example you gave too for the language to use because I, I think that probably matters, right? To As far as the, not minimizing it and not over dramatizing it, but just sort of hitting, acknowledging it and just sort of taking it as it is what it is, but I hear you. I hear you, and I want to know how I can be a support, um, or tell me what you need. I think asking rather than assuming, checking things out with your teenager, 
is this something where they want space? Um, they want to kind of create their own schedule or are there things that you can do as a parent or guardian or family member to support them in having more structure to their days? Um, maybe you take on cooking dinner together every night or maybe you take on a certain family activity certain times of the day. I think for some teenagers that schedule and structure is really important. Right. And for others, you know, maybe not, not so as much. Maybe they're actually finding some relief during this time that their schedules aren't as stressful and obligations have changed. But I think it's, it's important to at least have the conversation and talk um, with your teens, communicate with them, and find out what is it they're needing during these days. So um, I can speak personally. I know it feels like our, our environment has kind of closed in a little bit and there, there tends to be, feels like a little more friction or just a little too much family togetherness. Yeah. Um, is there something parents can sort of do, you know, besides, okay, yes, we are experiencing this. Is there anything suggestion that, that might be able to help sort of with that friction? Yeah, I think scheduling that family time, whatever that looks like, whether it's a meal time or exercise time or just a time when you're you're all sitting down together or watching a show that, that maybe you all enjoy. Um, but really finding a time to connect and um, really assessing as a family, what, how is everybody getting the sleep that they need? Um, how are you moving your bodies? What do you need to stay healthy? Is that, what does that look like food wise? Um, teenagers have a very often different food preference. And so thinking about as a family, what does that mean? How you can accommodate that and how is it that everybody can get something um, that they need every day or, or actually have an activity where they can find joy, um, maybe laugh and just simply get outside. What about, you know, privacy? And because I know that's an issue a lot for a lot of teens and parents yeah. and caregivers. Like, is there anything, you know, suggestion wise that you, you could say for that? Like, I, I, I'm just curious about those sort of boundaries. I think respect is super important. Being able to listen to your teen and acknowledge that they do need a long time, they need privacy. Um, this time, developmentally, is a time where teens are starting to individuate. So, we want to empower choices where we can. There's a lot we don't have a choice about right now, but some things we do. So, um, being able to talk with your teen about what matters to them, and again, empower their choices where they have one and respecting those. Um, recognizing that they too are, are trying to figure things out. It might look different um, than it does for adults. And you know, this is an important part of the conversation to have with them around what is it that they're needing and how you can help them, how you can help them cope. Right, right. What about digital? sort of, you know, rules regarding smartphones and computers, because, you know, that's the way everyone's connecting and how we're being social. But if it seems like parents might be struggling with sort of those, you know, rules and, and boundaries as well. I hear you. And I, I think so much of that varies from family to family, what the norms were prior to COVID-19 and kind of what the the rules are now. Um, I think for all of us, not just for teens, but being able to limit our exposure to the media to kind of not stay in that constant news cycle, um, but rather to find ways of encouraging one another, connecting with people we love and our friends, our family. Um, so maybe that's setting up a different kind of form of communication as a family or deciding at, you know, eight o'clock every night, you're going to be done with technology for the rest of the night. I don't always think that's reasonable for teens because they often have a very different schedule. With the night schedule. But, yeah. yeah. At least having the conversation with them 
around, um, again, what is it they need and how to connect with people, even virtually, but do it in safe ways that really help and support their mental health. I know for a lot of the teens that I work with and talk to, it's, it's really important for them to connect with their friends, their peers every day. That's, that's their reality in terms of how they measure, engage what's going on in the world is how the people around them are doing. And that's not necessarily their family. So many of the teens are having Zoom calls with each other, check-ins with somebody. Um, there's Instagram pages now that are kind of specifically designated for positive messaging and you know, ways for teens to connect with each other. And all those are great resources and, um, you know, something that I would encourage any teen to, to check out. You mentioned a little bit, a uh, little bit about involving your teen to help problem solve. And I think that's just worth talking about a little bit more. Like, can you give some examples of what that might look like? Well, I think it can be as easy as what are we going to have for dinner and kind of planning that out, you know, looking at the tasks that your family needs for a particular day or a particular week, who's gonna go to the grocery store or you know, what is it that needs to be done around the house or maybe there's people in the neighborhood that you can help support during this time from cutting the grass to um, you know, just different ways that we're trying to support and resource our neighbors right now. So teens are, are really creative and amazing people can contribute to a lot of that problem solving that we're all trying to do, that we're all faced with right. each day. So I wouldn't count them out. Instead, I would see them as a resource. And they know a lot. They know a lot about social media and technology. And so maybe that's kind of employing them to use some of those skill sets that not all adults have um, and letting them teach us how to, how to navigate these times. That's a great idea. You mentioned a little bit um, about some resources and like utilizing Zoom and utilizing Instagram for setting up groups and stuff. Are there other places where parents or caregivers could, parents and caregivers could go to get like credible help, you know, resources looking into getting some support? Yeah, childrensmentalhealthmatters.org has tremendous resources for supporting children and teens during these days of COVID-19. Um, they're specific to mental health needs of teens. They have some great ideas and resources on there. A lot of the school systems are also providing additional support to teens. Okay. okay. For, for kids who don't have access to technology, maybe they don't have a computer at home, I know that a lot of those resources are out there and available to people in, in the school systems. The other thing that, that really comes to mind is healthychildren.org and the Child Mind Institute. Both of those are resources for parents and families to, to just talk about the impact of anxiety and stress that is unique to teens, that, that is very real. Mm -hmm. And we wanna be sure to, you know, assess and really pay attention to when a teen is struggling and they're, um, you know, telling us they're struggling. We want to take that seriously. Mm -hmm. So if your teen is in need of support, um, if you're in Anne Arundel or Prince George's County or really in the state of Maryland, there's lots of crisis response lines that are available to, to support your teen and to support you in knowing how to help your teen during these days. And we'll make sure to include all those resources that you just mentioned in our Facebook comments so that they're easy to, to find. So that's awesome. Thank you. Is there anything else that, that we need to cover today? We've talked about sort of the, the, the realness of the loss that teens are experiencing and then just a few strategies that, that we're hoping might be able to be of some help to parents and some additional online resources. I think that that covers it just to again really affirm that what your teens are experiencing is real and valid so the more that we can model for them um, how to to navigate these days to manage our own stress without placing the expectation on our teens to be perfect or any different than we are honestly 
we're all living in this time of ambiguity together. So to really see your teen as a partner, to really see them as somebody that can help and has something to offer during these days, um, I think can be really empowering and helpful. Yeah, I think that's great. Thanks, Amy. You're welcome. Take good care. Before we sign off, I want to um, thank the John and Kathy Belcher Institute for their generous support of the community education programs at Hospice of the Chesapeake. And thank you guys for watching.